Maybe. All right. Well, I guess I can get started. So, yeah, I'm I'm Zach Hudson. Um, I'm I'm the hardware guy in the room full of software people. So I, I feel a little bit like a fish out of water. Um, but I, I kind of wanted to talk more about the hardware, right? Everyone here is focused on the software and the upper layers, um, and it all has to live on top of hardware at the end of the day. Um, we've we've started to kind of learn a little bit more about um, hardware and, and what it takes to, to develop a custom hardware for an EV charger. Um, I know there's some of you are more focused on uh, kind of further up the stack as CPOs and things like that, but we've been primarily focused on EV charging and EVSEs. Um, so as, as hardware engineers, we're, we're taught to think about DFX, DFM, DFT, DFA, DFC, right? So designing for all of these considerations, keeping these in mind as we're doing hardware design. And the one I wanna kind of bring to people's minds is DFS, design for software, and keeping the software engineers in mind as you're designing your hardware, um, because you can make a lot of these pain points much easier for people by thinking about them early on in your hardware design life cycle. So thinking about drivers, thinking about all of the, the pieces that are, or that are gonna be required to bring your, your system up um, early on and, and thinking those things through can really help uh, down the line to make things much easier. So um, I kinda wanna just go through some of the, the systems uh, on an EV charger and what those might look like and some of the things you need to keep in mind as you're doing these designs. Um, in my world, everything starts with the, the Linux and the, the processor core. So for us, that's a, a, a Phytex SOM, but it could be a chip down solution as well. That this is kind of agnostic in those, those terms. Um, we're, I'm gonna kind of use our example here of the TI AM62 Satara processor on a Phytex SOM, but it, it could be anything. Um, so the, the critical pieces to think through here are power, um, you need something to, to bring that processor up, you need DDR for the, the processor to run, you need flash to boot from, and then you need to be able to talk to it. So that's connectivity, whether that's, um, you know, we'll, we'll get into all of the specifics of that. Um, and then the, the cool thing with a, with a SOM, like what we have here, is that it brings all of those pieces together into one unit. It's field replaceable, or you can go with a DSC, which will reduce cost at, at the expense of some of that field replaceability. Um, but in any case, these are, these are things that you need to make sure are, are good and locked down because you don't wanna be diagnosing these problems later on when you're actually working on your end system. Um, once you've got good processor core, you need to be able to boot that system and debug that system. So what does that mean? Boot switches. Um, it's very critical to, to make sure that the system knows where it's booting from and what boot media it's booting from. We also encourage customers, especially on a development system, to boot from an SD card. SD card is much easier to replace as you're doing development. You can then depopulate that and boot from something like EMMC, which is on the, the, the SOM later down the line. Um, the other thing that's really important is debug and your debug interface. You wanna keep that consistent. You don't wanna be changing that. It's much easier to use the, the, the default boot uh, or default debug interface um, because you don't have to figure that out later. You don't wanna be changing that. The other thing is um, heartbeat LEDs. I can't tell you the number of times the customer removes heartbeat LEDs or doesn't want to put heartbeat LEDs down, but it, it's really a good sign of life and it, it allows you to, to debug these systems much quicker. Um, so now you've got a Linux system that boots and you can talk to it and you can debug it. Um, some, some, some of the uh, pieces for actual EV charging start with um, more of the, the basic charging. So this is, if you think back to what Kai was talking about, this is that CP communication, um, which you need kind of three critical pieces for. It's, it's an MCU, it's an ADC, and it's an op amp. So uh, your op amp is generating that 12 volt signal. 
your ADC is reading that signal as it, it comes back from the car, and the MCU is there to, to process those safety critical signals for, for establishing that initial charging session. Um, what I've got here outlined is, is kind of those circuits on our Electra development kit. Um, these design files are going to be made available upon request, um, and, and we're encouraging people to use these designs because we've, we've demonstrated them. They're, they're working designs. Um, it works with Everest, um, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a proven functional design. Um, so it's, it's a really great resource in that sense to, to kind of build on top of and integrate it into your custom design um, so it's, it can kind of simplify things. Um, the next piece is that higher level PLC communication. Our example design is using the Lumisil Phi. Um, we've also done uh, examples with Redbeat as well. Um, this is communicating over SPI, uh, and it's, or you can use um, uh, MII, but we're using SPI because of the simplicity there. Um, and again, these are reference designs that are available. Please use them. You know, re reuse these pieces, much like you know the Everest stack allows you to reuse pieces that are uh, you don't have to rebuild the code from the beginning. Reuse these pieces in your custom design to, to simplify these things and, and get to market quicker and more reliably. Um, then we have connectivity, and so this goes back to some of the over-the-air updates or talking to your, your grid operators and things like that. So that's Ethernet, um, wireless communication, whether that's LTE, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Um, we like uh, modules both from a, a, a simplicity standpoint and then a, a certification standpoint, right? So whenever you get into the wireless world, you need to certify things with the FCC as an intentional radiator. Uh, and that can be both a time-consuming and expensive proposition. Uh, a lot of these modules are coming pre-certified now. Put an M.2 connector on. You can plug in whatever module you can, you know, off the shelf. Many of these things have drivers already built into the Linux kernel, and, and it's, it's much easier to just develop that way than trying to put down your own custom wireless solution. Um, CAN, USB, these types of physical interfaces, RS-485, those types of things. Um, these highlighted ones here are just one of the ones that are on our development kit. These might be less applicable to directly copy, um, but, but these are reference designs that are available. These are somewhat simpler interfaces, um, but they're still important interfaces to have and to think about the drivers and the, how this is going to support your software down the line. Um, then the human interface, right? So HMI, what, what is that? So if we've got HDMI or LVDS, um, display interfaces, touch interface. Uh, you want to be able to, you know, use it, interact with it. Um, again, you can use, you know, wireless Wi-Fi Bluetooth through that M.2 connector uh, or different sensors or audio. You need feedback, uh, haptics, those kinds of things. Um, Again, the, the Lyra carrier board here for the 6.2 has some of these circuits, uh, certainly the display interfaces. Uh, the, the sensors are perhaps maybe a little bit more on you. And then uh, graphics partners as well. So we've worked with a couple of different graphics partners. There are graphics packages available that can be built on top of um, Everest and the, the meta layers that are there. So you can keep, kind of keep building that stack up to get all the way up to your, your human machine interface. Uh, and then the last one I want to talk about is thermal. And this one frequently gets forgotten um, by kind of the hardware design. Um, you can see it's not just the processor that makes heat here. You've got the Ethernet Phi, you've got the Lumisil Phi, those are big heat sources. And then often these systems are getting deployed uh, outside in the hot Texas sun where Yes, the ambient temperature outside isn't that hot, um, but inside of a box where the sun's beating down, if you don't have a way to get that heat out of the box, you're going to struggle. And so having a plan for that heat is, is really critical. So um, we've got some heat sinks. Um, that can be a great option. Heat spreader, use your box. Let the, the metal enclosure of your, your, your whole system radiate the heat for you. Um, but have a plan and, and keep in mind what's 
what you're going to do with that heat as, as, you, as you go forward. Last thing you want to do is have the processor shut down on a sunny day because you, you hit the, the design temperature of, of the die. Um, so kind of starting from the bottom, you've got the hardware, right? So you, and then you're building all of these pieces on top of it. So Phytech, we, we're going to help you get to that, that booting of Linux and, and the meta layers that are involved in getting Everest uh, middleware and, and the, the EV charging stack running. Um, and then you can put your custom pieces on top. Just like the Pionics guys were talking about, you want to keep that, that stack static. You don't want to be everyone doing their own thing. It, it, that stack still has to sit on top of hardware. And, and not every piece of hardware can be the same. We can't all use you know, one reference design, but we can all use some of the same building pieces and, and reuse some of these building pieces to get ourselves to a, a good starting point to put that Everest stack on top of. Um, again, we like the 6.2, the AM62X processor from GI for this. There are other options out there, um, and, and some of those will come down to, you know, what exact features that you need. But we think the 6.2 makes a great solution for, uh, for EV charging. Um, other kind of systems we've done here, so on, on the left is the, the 5 or so. Um, and I think I've shown some of you that this morning already. Uh, this is a dual charging system uh, that has dual interfaces for, for setting up um, communication that way. And on the right is a couple of cool uh, University of Washington capstone projects we worked with students on last year. Um, both, both teams are kind of able to go from, you know, never having worked with electronics before essentially, right? To, to booting Linux and getting a, a system up and running uh, in just a short capstone project. So that was, that was kind of fun. And we've got, so one, one team was, was doing a, an EV charger, essentially. Uh, again, kind of a demonstration system. Uh, and the other team was, was working on something that would emulate a car for, for testing out chargers. And neither of these really got to the point of being like releasable products, certainly. But um, it, was, it was a lot of fun to work with the students on and kind of teach them. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the grades as much as I said, like an automotive thing. Yeah, so I don't know the automotive numbers as much. Our Phytech were, the SOM is certified for what we call industrial temp, minus 40 to plus 80. Um, and that ambient, so that's going to be, um, you know, but that'll be dependent on extracting the heat away from the SOM, right? So your ambient temperature is only gets you so far in your rating. You, you need to make sure you're getting the heat uh, away from those those hot spots as well. The, the phi is 105. The phi will go to 105, but that's 105 junction, right? No, 105 is 125. 125. Okay, so yeah, so you've got a little bit more headroom there. Um, I think, I, I, in fact, I know the the 62. Uh, there are variants of the 62 that are rated as well, up to 125 junction. Um, so those are those are things that you can kind of plan through and work on. Um, and, and we can, you know, we can work on custom customizing hardware and stuff as well, you know, from a business business perspective, uh, of course. But yeah, just having that in mind and, and knowing what your what your requirements are going to be and thinking those things through. And that's that's what I want to get is, you know, I don't have all of the answers for you, but I want to get people thinking about some of these these problems. Um, so uh, that was kind of all I had. I just wanted to kind of briefly run through some of these, these hardware pieces, and I'd, I'd be happy to answer questions. The other thing um, I would be remiss to point out is that um, the, the sales team gave me the, the free code here. So um, we have 6.2 kits uh, that we'll, we'll be sharing um, for free. Uh, you just have to place an order uh, at phytech.com. We have some in the back I can show you. I unfortunately don't have any I can give away today. Um, you'll have to kind of go through the website and get those on order. Um, I think primarily because the, the expansion board there at the top, um, we don't have enough of those in stock right now. So that's going to be a little bit, probably about a month to get those kind of in people's hands. But that shouldn't, shouldn't be too bad. So uh, questions? Yeah. Um, so that is based on the Lumisil Phi. Uh, and then it has a um, MSPM0 uh, microcontroller as well. So what's the actual number? Um, I don't have it on. 
Right. So the so the PEB X005 is just the expansion board there at the top, um, and then that plugs into the 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 Lyra carrier board, which is the bottom board there. That Lyra carrier board has a, a FITEC, FICOR AM62X uh, SOM. So the, the standard part number for the FICOR AM62 is the um, TI AM6235, I believe, um, which is kind of their top spec 62. And then that's configurable down with different variants of the 62. Um, we, we can build you a custom config uh, with, with basically any processor variant that TI has. Other hardware questions? No, all right, well, I'm, I'm quick then, I'm, I'm short. Um, please, you know, come talk to me. We've got some cool, cool stuff in the back to show you as well from a hardware perspective. Um, but that's all, that's all for me. Thanks, Zach. Okay, so we're a little bit ahead of schedule. Don't get too excited because, like, usually there's